Hey guys, it's Pierre here. I'm back with another setup guide. This time for my favorite game, Escape from Tarkov. Uh, I've made a 14 point optimization guide that outlines all the settings and configuration options that I choose when I optimize my own systems to run my benchmark videos. So I hope it's helpful and if you have any questions or comments along the way, feel free to leave them below. And um, thanks for watching. Okay, the first step is to update Windows to the latest available version. The easiest way to do that is within the Windows Update section in the control panel. Um, the way I get there is by pulling up the start menu and I just start typing update. You'll see check for updates pop up. And I'll go ahead and check for updates here. If there's any updates, they'll populate here. It looks like I'm fully updated, but if you get if you have updates available, they'll populate here. You'll download and install them, and then uh, depending on the type of update, it'll either make you restart or you can just install and continue using the computer. All right, the next step is to update your GPU drivers. I'm running a 3090 Ti in this rig currently. Uh, the way I normally update these drivers is to use GeForce Experience. Um, if you don't have it installed already, then I'll leave a link in the description below um, where you can go and download it. Um, this is the way I update my drivers for my uh, NVIDIA cards. Um, you can also go and actually download the driver installation file and do it yourself. Um, this is just much more convenient, so I use this. Um, so you open up GeForce Experience, go to the Drivers tab, hit check for updates. It looks like it already populated an update for me um, that was released uh, a couple days ago. So I'm going to go ahead and download it. And I always suggest using custom installation and it's going to give you some options. I always suggest using um, the option here to perform a clean installation. Go ahead and install it. Okay, so installation is completed. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Okay, so if you're running an AMD card, um, you're going to update the drivers using AMD Radeon software, which you can download from this site here. I'm going to leave the link in the description as well. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a rig up right now with a Radeon card in it, so um, if you want to see the process, I'll leave a link um, to my other to my Warzone optimization video, which actually does have um, a clip of me updating an AMD card through Radeon software. All right, so step three is to update the VBIOS on the GPU. So I have an EVGA 3090 Ti FTW3 Ultra. The way I get the VBIOS updated is through EVGA Precision X1. It's an application that EVGA makes. I'll go ahead and open it here. When you get it open, you can click the resizable bar tab here, and then it will show you your current version. If you're not up to date, it will prompt you to update it, um, and it will do it automatically uh, through this application. Okay. If you have a different manufacturer's card, you'll have to, um, you know, look up your manufacturer's process of updating the VBIOS. Um, so go ahead and do that accordingly. Okay, the next step is to update the BIOS to the latest available. Um, you can check your current BIOS version in a number of ways. The way I do it from Windows is just hit Windows R to open the run function. And then I typed msinfo32. You can see I have an X570 AORUS Master. Um, and then down here, the BIOS version is F36C. If you go to the Gigabyte support site, then you can find your uh, board here. In the drop down list, I'm going to find the X570 and then choose the AORS Master version 1.1, 1.2, which is the one I have. And it's going to open up a download list. I'm going to go to BIOS. We said before I'm on F36C. Right here. It looks like 
a new version was released two days ago. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this. And I'm gonna use QFlash to update my BIOS, which which uses a USB drive and you do it all through the BIOS um, interface. There's also a utility called at BIOS for gigabyte boards that lets you do it through Windows. I'm just you know, used to doing it through QFlash, so you can choose how you want to do it. I'm going to leave links below for other motherboards as well, but they, you know, each motherboard has a similar option. So um, go ahead and update the BIOS. Okay, moving from hardware and driver updates, the next step is changing settings in the NVIDIA control panel. The way I usually do that is by right clicking on the desktop, go show more options, hit NVIDIA control panel. You can also get there by clicking the right clicking the icon in the lower right hand corner here. Uh, once you have control panel open, go to manage 3D settings and go to program settings. Hit the drop down and select escape from Tarkov. If you don't have it, then hit the add button, go to browse and uh, locate it manually. These are the settings I change here. I turn anti-aliasing gamma correction to off low latency mode on preferred refresh rate or I'm sorry power management mode preferred maximum performance preferred refresh rate highest available um, for texture filtering the anisotropic sample optimization is on negative LOD bias on clamp quality on high performance trilinear optimization on uh, and the rest I leave default Okay, five in my process is turning G-Sync off. Uh, I prefer not to run any kind of adaptive sync when I'm doing my benchmark test. The way I do this is by going into NVIDIA control panel um, and checking if G-Sync is on. There, if it is on, you'll have a setup G-Sync uh, option under display and you'll see that it's enabled. So right now, it is, I turned it on just for demonstration purposes. Uh, the way I turn it off is by turning off Adaptive Sync on my monitor. Okay, the only way to turn off Adaptive Sync on the Samsung G7 is to actually switch it off on the uh, monitor control. So, I'm going to record this by hand. Right now Adaptive Sync is on. I'm going to go ahead and switch it off. And then we're going to see the setup G-Sync option disappear. All right, step seven in my setup process is to enable Windows game mode. The way I do this is by bringing up the start menu, just start typing game mode. Game mode settings uh, will pop up. There's an option right here to toggle it on or off. Mine is already on. Um, there are debates about whether this improves or degrades performance. For me personally, I've seen it improve performance in my benchmarks, so I always run it with it on. But uh, I do encourage you to try testing it on and off um, because you know I guess results can really vary depending on your hardware. Okay. Step eight in my process is enabling. Um, Windows Hardware Accelerated Graphics Scheduling. So if you just start typing graphics, it'll pop up with Windows uh, graphics settings. And if you go to change default graphics settings, there's an option called Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling. Um, it's supposed to reduce latency and improve performance. I don't know exactly what it does, to be honest, but um, in my testing of it on and off, I've seen improvement with it on. Um, so it's another one of those things kind of like Windows game mode where results might vary depending on your hardware setup. Um, so you know this is how I run it but I encourage you to try and test it on your own to see what's optimal for you. Alright so nine in my setup process is to change the power plan on my PC. By default it's usually set to the balanced option which is great for efficiency but not really for maximizing performance. Um, and when I'm running these benches, I kind of want to let her rip, you know. So uh, what I do is change it to the high performance power plant. Um, the way you can do that is by opening up the start menu, start typing power options, click edit power plant. And I'm going to go 
one option back and go to power options up here. Um, and right now it's on balanced. I'm gonna go ahead and change it to high performance. Okay. All right, step 10 is to overclock the RAM. I don't have a way to screen record my BIOS screen, but I took some screenshots of it and I'll just go over the settings that I changed. Basically, I've enabled the XMP profile. These sticks are rated at 4000 MHz CL14. Uh, I had to lower the memory frequency a little bit from 4000 to 3933. Uh, and then I changed my F clock frequency to 1967. And then I've also adjusted the TRC setting here down to 50 and the TRSC to 300. Other than that, it's running on the XMP profile. Just as a disclaimer, don't copy these exact settings. Uh, it's gonna vary depending on the type of RAM you have, the motherboard you have. So uh, this is just an example of how you can overclock your RAM using a gigabyte motherboard and the particular sticks I have. But um, apply it, you know, accordingly to the hardware that you have. All right, step 11 is to overclock the GPU. I use MSI Afterburner to do that. And the settings I use are pretty conservative. I don't really push it. I just do 50 on, plus 50 on the core clock and then plus 500 on the memory clock. And then usually when I'm uh, running video games, I'll uh, push this fan speed up to 100%. And um, if you want to save a profile, once you apply the settings, you can hit the little diskette icon, hit a number. I think you got to click it twice. Yeah. And then it'll um, save in that uh, preset slot. Case okay, so 12 is I'm setting full screen optimizations and the application to run as admin. So what you want to do is locate your installation folder, mine is on the D drive here, and go to Battlestate Games, EFT, and then right click on escape from Tarkov.exe, go to properties. In the compatibility tab, you'll want to click change settings for all users, and then disable full screen optimizations, run this program as an administrator, and then under change high DPI settings. Check this off where it says override high DPI scaling behavior and make sure that where it says scaling perform by, select application. All right, apply, okay, okay, and that's it. All right, step 13 doesn't necessarily affect your FPS, but it does have a pretty significant effect on gameplay in my opinion. I always disable the enhanced pointer precision option within the mouse properties section of the Windows control panel. The easiest way to get there is by pulling up the start menu, start typing in mouse, click on additional mouse settings, and then within the pointers, pointer options tab, you'll see an option called Enhanced Pointer Precision. This is enabled by default in Windows, and I always disable this um, in Tarkov and for any games. It basically applies some kind of acceleration algorithm to the pointer, so it, uh, it accelerates non-linearly, which is not good for you know, trying to get consistent aim.